Hi everybody, it's crunch time in our nine mission campaign with By Stealth and Sea. We've got two missions left and we are losing to our historical counterparts by six points. Even worse, our historical counterparts score 12 big points on this mission, meaning that we need 18 points to go into our last mission dead even. This means one thing, battleships. And a, ra and a raider's hat for good luck. The Malaya and the King George sit inside Gibraltar Harbor, and we're going after them today. We gotta go big. We're sending our most experienced crew, Waliche and Lille, who in their last two missions have sunk two ships, including the HMS Formidable. They're going into the heart of the harbor, but we need a big day. We have two new crews, Servo and Jimmy J Jr., as well as Luigi and Ray Jr. We're gonna be sending them after the King George. Can two inexperienced crews sink a massive battleship on their first mission? No, but we're gonna try. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Gibraltar Harbor on the 8th of May, 1943. Not a lot of targets in here, but we have two very juicy ones. The Malaya the battleship here sits in the northeast corner of the harbor, and King George V sits more in a central position in the harbor. Those are our targets today. To the south, in the open ocean, are our forces. We have SLC number one, and their plan of attack is going to proceed straight to turning point here, and they're going to head due north, entering the harbor here at this torpedo gate, proceeding north, breaking to the northeast, getting under the Malaya, blowing up the Malaya, and then escaping into the night. Our other two inexperienced crews, Servo and Jimmy J Jr. aboard SLC number two, Luigi and Ray Jr. aboard SLC number three, are going to proceed straight ahead to this bingo point right here. This is our decision point. At this point, if they have enough time and they're in good enough condition, they're gonna break north, go through the harbor, the harbor, the torpedo nets here, and try to take out the King George here. If circumstances don't allow that, they'll proceed on and try to hit these target cargo ships on the outside of the harbor. That's our plan. We need a big day. Let's get started. We have made one upgrade to our equipment. Our engineers have improved our warheads. Not a significant improvement. It just gives us a slightly less chance that they're going to break. Now in this mission, our Altera starting position allows us to have our SLCs start without any breakage and they get three breathing tokens. This is a valuable starting position for us. We do, however, at the start of this midnight turn, need to roll to see which one of our SLCs has a breakage in the first turn. Of course, it's a two. Servo and Jimmy J Jr. aboard the cursed SLC number two will suffer our first damage. All right, let's see what's broken here. Hopefully something minor. Ballast tank fault, that's not a good one because the ballast tank, well, they are actually already on the surface. That would just delay them a start and make them a little bit more susceptible to getting spotted here. Hopefully they can fix it with the four, five or six. They get a six, excellent. Good work by Servo and Jimmy J Jr. They solved the first fault and now we can get started on our mission here at midnight. We're gonna start with Walice and Lille aboard SLC number one. And I wanted to point out that they gained an experience point in the last mission. We've put it on operational skill. This will allow them to detonate the warhead more effectively, detach the warhead more effectively, but more importantly, it'll give them an extra die roll trying to cross those deadly torpedo nets. So they'll get out of that range of the mortar fire more effectively. So it's a little bit of a risky move, but I think we have to do anything we can to make them less likely to get hit as they cross the torpedo nets. We're gonna start with SLC number one. Waliche and Lille are gonna use their operational skill to try to scamper ahead three squares on the surface here. To succeed, they need a four, five, or six on one of these two dice. Ah, they get double threes again. That's how they started last time. Well, they're going to try to submerge now. They need a four, five, or six on one of these two dice. They get a four and a five, which we could have split those up. So they do successfully submerge. SLC number two and three are going to use all of their skill points to submerge. I think it's worthwhile to reduce our chances to get spotted here. So we're gonna be a little bit conservative and not try to risk them going forward. So that brings us now to the enemy detection phase. I'm gonna do this off camera and I'll show the results. Luck does not shine upon us in this midnight slot. 
SLC number one is the only SLC that doesn't get detected. SLC number two was spotted by searchlights. SLC number three was spotted by patrol craft number one. It comes scorching out of the harbor to try to detect him and take him out of action. As we head now to the 12.30 a.m. turn, hopefully because we submerge them, they should be okay because if they move forward, they're gonna lose those detection markers, which should keep, we're a little bit fortunate in our 12.30 a.m. turn here. It should keep patrol craft number one a little bit clueless as to where we are. We need a little bit of good fortune now though. Let's get started, see what happens, see which SLC breaks now on our 12.30 turn here. SLC number three, that's Luigi and Ray. Let's check this out. So Luigi and Ray have something break. Let's see what it is, hopefully something mild. Breathing gear fault, that's actually very good because we have three breathing gear tokens. Now the downside is that it takes a six to repair it. Hopefully we can get lucky. Oh, we get a five, so close. So it fails, that means they lose one of their three breathing gear tokens. But in the scope and span of stuff that could go wrong, that's pretty mild, especially with the patrol craft right around us. Let's go take our actions in the 1 a.m. slot in the harbor now. All right, SLC number one, which is submerged, is going to move ahead one which is a safe move. And then they're gonna to try to use their operational skill to move ahead two squares under the surface. They need a four, five, or six. They get a five and a two. The five is good. So they move ahead two slots, getting closer to their turning point. SLC number two is going to move ahead one, which will lose them their detection marker automatically. Then they're gonna to try to make an operational roll on a four, five, or six to move ahead two squares with the full move. They get a four, excellent work, Servo and Jimmy J Jr. They slide ahead two squares, getting closer to their targets. SLC number three, they're gonna take both of their action points and do a full move. I, I wanna try to avoid having them get stuck underneath patrol craft number one, because there's a one in four chance they're gonna stay there, and only a one in eight chance they're gonna go past us. That move, however, causes them to lose their detection marker as well. Let's go now to see how the enemy responds here in the 1 a.m. detection phase. Okay, Lady Luck does not, shine upon, does not shine upon us here at 1 a.m. SLC number one, undetected. SLC number two, undetected. SLC number three, as an aside, for the second time, they picked that 12, that highest card that forces us to throw out the low card and reset the deck. So the second time they get that, spotted by sought spotlights, then spotted additionally by a patrol craft. So as we end the detection phase, they are spotted. That means because they've been spotted, patrol craft number one, it's gonna move right towards them and attack. So we have to figure out, we have to have them now attack. They're gonna pull this, we're gonna do this one, because it's important. Hopefully, no damage done here to Luigi and Ray Jr. The enemy craft, because they're submerged, they need a nine or greater to hit. Hoping for something low, a three, excellent. So the depth charges have no effect, and although they've been spotted, no harm done. We're now gonna to go to our 1.30 a.m. turn to see which SLC has something break. It's two, as we would expect again. Servo and Jimmy J. Jr.'s SLC suffers a malfunction. Let's see what it is. As always, hoping for something innocuous or something that they can fix. Breathing gear fault. Okay, that, again, that's not too bad, I think, for these situations. They need a six to fix it. They get a five for the second time. That fails, that means they lose one of their valuable breathing tokens, but we do have three from this position. So again, in the range of things that can go wrong, that's pretty mild. Let's go take our actions in the 1.30 a.m. turn. All right, so SLC number one's turning point to head right for the torpedo nets is right here. So we're gonna have them use one action point to move forward and then try to use their operational skill to turn to the north. They need a four, five, or six on one die. Get a four on one of them, perfect, it works. They reorient themselves to the north and head for the torpedo nets. SLC number two, to get them away from patrol craft number two, which by the way is ready, to get them away from patrol craft number two, we're gonna have them use all of their action points to move ahead two spaces. That way, if, if they moved one and failed the double move, and then patrol craft number two got get a one in eight chance they could get them, I'd rather have them away there. SLC <laughs> number three, Okay, they're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna use both of their action points here to move ahead underneath patrol craft number two and come out on the other side, staying under the surface, losing that detection mo mo marker, and hopefully 
they can stay undetected in this response phase. I'm gonna do the response phase now off camera. We'll see what happens as the patrol craft and the searchlights continue to look for our energetic SLCs. Unfortunately, the gods do not favor us here. Patrol craft spots SLC number one, while Ite and Lile, our best crew, is spotted. This causes patrol craft number one and patrol craft number two to come racing to the scene and immediately drop depth charges on them here. This is not good. Now, a nine or greater hits, but they get two attacks here. That would stun Waliche and Lile. This is, yeah, this is looking pretty grim here. A 10, oh no! They're stunned by the first depth of charge attack. If they get another successful attack, they would go from being perfectly functional to being killed and knocked out of action. Our best crew, our hope for the Malaya here, their lives are on the line here. A nine! No! Waliche and Lile killed by extraordinarily accurate depth charges. Our mission goes sideways in the 130 hour. We lose our best crew and our hope for sinking in the Malaya. Our entire mission's hope now settle on two inexperienced crews. What a devastating blow to our teams and to our hopes of overcoming history. We did not need that. Oh, a tragic loss so early in the mission. Gosh, that was so unfortunate. Waliche and Lile dropped out of action. Oh, I'm devastated. All right, we have to go to our 2 a.m. turn to see which SLC breaks. It's SLC 1, but that's already completely broken. So now we can go to our actions here. Gosh, that's devastating. Okay, we're going to be a little bit more risky now that there's some distance here between these SLCs and the patrol craft. We're going to have SLC number 2, Servo and Jimmy J. They have to go for the battleships here. We're going to have them go one ahead and then try to use their operational move to surge ahead two. Let's see if we can get a four, five, or six on one die roll. They get a six. Excellent work. They're rising to the occasion. They move ahead too. This move gets them very close to the harbor entrance. Their next move will try to get through those torpedo nets, but we still have Luigi and Ray. Luigi and Ray are gonna to try to do the same thing. They're gonna move ahead one, and they're gonna to try to use their operational skill to move ahead two. They need a four, five, or six. They get a three and they fail, so they will trail behind. Now we're going to the enemy's response. So in this 2 a.m. phase, once again, SLC number three, Luigi and Ray Jr. are spotted by uh, searchlights with the 12 card. However, they do get fortunate that another patrol craft doesn't spot them. And the good fortune here is that the patrol craft are too far away to reach them in their response phase. They do come full speed towards them to try to catch up to them, but they aren't able to catch up to them before they'll be able to try to make an elusive mover, movement in the 2.30 a.m. turn. So let's see which SLC has something break in this turn. Hopefully a one again. Oh, nice, We're getting a little bit lucky with that anyway. So now we can take some actions here. All right, SLC number two is gonna to try to enter the harbor here. They're gonna to try to turn first. They need a four, five, or six to make this move using one action point. They get a three, which means they fail. Oh, that's not good because now they can't really do anything. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna have them, I should have had them turn with their full action point, I suppose, but we're gonna have them sit there and wait. SLC number three is gonna use that distance gap and try to move ahead two squares, and that will put a little bit of distance between them and the patrol craft that are chasing them, and that way they lose that detection marker. Hopefully that will leave the patrol craft behind. Now it's time for the 2.30 response by the enemy teams in the harbor here. Finally, we get some luck. Our enemy, the enemy is unable to spot us at all. That will mean that the patrol craft are gonna get some random moves. We'll do those off camera, and then we'll head to our 3 a.m. turn. Patrol craft number one and three go the wrong way. Patrol craft number two is a little bit smarter and heads right in the wake of SLC number three. These two patrol craft are now far away that we're gonna move them at the end of the cleanup phase here. We're going now to our 3 a.m. turn see if we can get at least one crew inside the harbor. Let's see first which one of our SLCs has some breakage here. It is SLC number two. We are hoping for something mild here. Battery fault. Okay, that's not really a problem because they need two of them to fail. Hopefully yet they can still fix it. They get a three, they can't. 
So we lose one of our two battery tokens. That doesn't matter until they lose a second one. Let's go back to the harbor. So we're gonna have Servo and Jimmy J Jr. take a slightly different approach. They're gonna use their full action points here to make that turn. Jimmy J, uh, Luigi and Ray Jr. are also gonna try to get inside the harbor. We're hoping we can get one SLC inside the harbor. They need a four, five, or six to turn because they're gonna do it with one action point. They get a six and they succeed. Now, their next movement is going to be to go try to make a full move. Oh, I sell token. Yeah. They're gonna to try to make a full move with another four, five, or six. They succeed, excellent. So they are in the danger spot. Now they're getting pounded by mortars here as we head into the enemy reaction phase. We need one of these two SLCs to get inside the harbor. Let's see what happens in our 3 a.m. reaction phase. As things are getting nitty gritty, we're gonna pull these on screen now. 3 a.m., we're hopeful to get through. Let's start out with the spotlights, the searchlights for SLC number two. Five, they pass. SLC number three, seven, pass. Now, underwater dive team doesn't matter. Patrol craft response, submerged. They need a 10 or greater to detect us. SLC number two, Servo and Jimmy J get a six, they are undetected. SLC number three, an eight, they are undetected. Now we come to the deadly part, the shore-based mortars. They need a seven or greater to hit us. If we have any chance of beating history in this campaign, we need to get inside the harbor and we need to go sink the King George V. Without that, there is no hope for us to beat history. We need a six or less. We need the shore-based mortars to fail.